I don't think one would argue with the fact that although there are many differences and many conflicts in our society, in our community, and in the world, oftentimes people don't agree on a lot of things. But I think one thing that's commonly true is that nobody wants to see anybody hungry. Uh, subsequently, uh, I've seen many instances where you know, people will just ask you, uh, even you know, people who know say, are you hungry? And then oftentimes you'll see people on the street, uh, people who are suffering from some kind of catastrophe or some kind of mishap. You know, the one thing that the community does uh, generally and universally is try to address those situations with at least uh, knowing that, you know, nobody is going hungry as a result of one situation, another situation, a catastrophe or what have you. Uh, consequently, uh, not only as it relates to individuals do people care about hunger and people not being hungry, you know, there are also entities and agencies, you know, in our community, in our state, and all across the world. I'm sure that you've seen on TV where, you know, you've got uh, nonprofits and institutions trying to address hunger. Well, the same is true here in Macon. You know, Macon is a loving community, and Macon uh, provides assistance uh, for a service that provides assistance to people who are in need, and that's uh, loaves and fishes. And today, I'm more than a little happy to be able to bring you some information on loaves and fishes and have the expert, uh, I said I'd throw it at him a little bit, <laughs> on loaves and fishes and hunger on a serious note uh, in our community, uh, Mr. Charles Hines III. You know, I like those little three marks after his name because I'm sure they have some history and he'll tell us about that too, I guess, when he gives us a little bow. But Mr. Hines, well, you just tell us who you are and what you do. Thank you, sir. Uh, once, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for the opportunity. Um, my name is Charles L. Hines III, and I've been fortunate enough to serve as the Executive Director of Loaves and Fishes Ministry of Macon Incorporated for the past 12 and a half years. Um, personally, um, I was in corporate America before I came to work uh, for the ministry, and it has been the, the most rewarding work uh, that in you know, my 25 plus year career that I've ever uh, had. So. That being said, um, what I'd like to do today is just tell you a little bit about loaves and fishes, and, uh, and just if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to ask, please, and I know that's what you do. Um, that being said, Loaves and Fishes Ministry was founded in 1967 uh, in the basement of Tattnall Square Presbyterian, which is on the corner of College and Oglethorpe, and we started in the basement just as a clothing bank. Um, it, it, the members of Tattle Square Presbyterian thought it not robbery to, uh, you know, feed and service the community that they were in. So they just wanted to start with a clothing bank and basically decided to exercise the Christian imperatives to clothe, feed, and shelter. So it, it evolved from that point. And um, I'm just going to take a, a huge leap uh, forward here, but that was in 1967, and a group of Presbyterian churches formed out of that uh, uh, making inner city ministry. And from there, um, uh, we uh, merged with another group that was pretty much had a parallel course. They were doing the same thing. They were clothing, feeding, and sheltering the members of, of their community. Um, and th that organization's name was CAM, which was Community Advocacy Ministry. So the two said, well, hey, let's just join forces and see if we can serve more people. So. Make an inner city ministry with its Presbyterian roots and then CAM uh, with its Episcopalian core but multi denominational. Okay. Uh, there were uh, a few, uh, not only just the core Episcopalian churches, but we had uh, some African American churches in there that, that helped found Loaves and Fishes, uh, which would have been uh, 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 this is going to be edited. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Loaves and Fishes Ministry um, uh, through CAN founded. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting nervous here. Sorry, right. take your time. Okay. No, no, no. You said some African American ministries, churches, 
And I think you were going to name some of the churches, maybe. Right, and and completely. That's um, okay. Okay. With with Cam, what we what we found is that we had it was uh, an Episcopalian core, and then it was multi denominational, and that they had other denominations. They had Baptist, Catholic, uh, and of that we had uh, a few uh, African American churches. So, Holy Temple, CME, uh, Washington Avenue, Presbyterian were two African American churches that helped bring it all together in 1967. Um, so from, from that vantage point, um, we were able to just be a force in the community and, and shelter, uh, clothe feed and shelter those who needed the help. Um, from, from there, um, you know, after continuing that, along that cycle for a number of years, um, the whole aspect of sheltering those who could not do it for themselves became a focal point. So in about 1989, we opened up our first uh, transitional home for homeless people with a focus on people who had addiction issues, uh, okay. primarily, you know, well, more so alcohol, but then it evolved into drugs and alcohol. And um, they were provided with the case manager, and, and the objective was for them to go to AANA, uh, work on their sobriety in a, in a sober living facility, and then basically try to work on whatever it would take for them to become fully self-sustaining. So um, since that time, our, our, our overall focus has taken on three particular areas. So Let me ask you a question, sure. if I could. Uh, now that shelter entity, is that still in existence? That is still in existence. And, and there is a physical uh, facility that, that shelters uh, these individuals Correct. who are having these problems? Yes, sir. We we have a, currently we have eleven transitional homes. Oh, wow. These are single family houses. Um, of the eleven, four are for individuals uh, uh, that are trying to transition away from drugs and alcohol and to get back on their feet. So, um, of those four houses, we have thirteen beds in those four houses, and uh, we provide them with a case manager. Um, the remaining seven of the 11 houses are for homeless families. Okay. So you can come into our program as an individual without children or unaccompanied by family, or you can come into our program as a family, of which you would have to have at least uh, three children in order to qualify. We want to try and maximize the bed space that we have. Um, so that being said. I got some, uh, uh, did you stay full or did, uh, is your duck? Are your doors been being knocked down for that kind of service? There's a steady stream of applicants. Uh, there is a steady stream of applicants. Um, Can you, but you can't accommodate all of them? Well, no. Uh, and so there is a need in the area for additional um, transitional housing is what we run. We're different from a shelter. A shelter, uh, you can come in and stay for the day and not right. come back if you so choose. Right. Uh, not to, and, and I guess that's a, the case anyway, but we're actually a program. You can come into our program, we'll provide you with the case manager. Uh, the case manager will look at uh, you know the things that have caused you uh, to end up, whatever travails you, you, you've been through that have caused you to end up homeless. What we want to do is try to embolden you, strengthen you, um, and then get you into a place where you're stable so that you're, you're self-sustaining. So if life's travails prevent again, you may have to take a step back, but the, the overarching objective is that that would not be to the place where you're homeless again. Um, so we look at when a person comes in, the first thing they have to do uh, to apply to our program, they would fill out an application. Um, from there, uh, they would go through an interview with our case manager. Uh, after that is done, we do a uh, background check. After the background check, depending upon what presents, we may do a second interview. Right. Okay. Um, after, uh, let's say, if we have an opportunity for you, we have a bed for you, or a house for the family, we'll extend that opportunity to you. Um, and then, before we allow you into the program, the last thing we do uh, is a, uh, a drug and alcohol test. And right. provided that you pass that, we'll move you into our houses. And um, the, the case manager will then work on what's known as an individual service plan. Uh, and it basically uh, has some core rudimentary aspects of it. Uh, we look at uh, uh, your financial literacy, literacy to begin with overall, and then financial literacy. Um, we'll look at trying to see how we can increase your education. We'll look at uh, increased job skills for you. 
And what we do then is, I mean, if it's a family, we may look at your life skills and your parenting skills, but through a series of partnerships that we have in the community, you know, the case manager is, is there to guide them to the appropriate agency. So what we've done is removed the obstacle uh, of being homeless. You don't know, you know, it's kind of hard to work on certain things if you don't have a roof over your head. So we're saying, well, we're going to put this roof over your head, and then from, from this vantage point, you know, we, let's start working on this so that we can strengthen you hopefully make you more stable so that you can survive without us. That's a good indication of the expression that it takes a village. And, you know, I got a couple of comments as it relates to that. The first of which is directed to those individuals who are going through something, uh, who, who, who are having a bad time. Uh, I think that everybody needs to be reminded that there are resources. There are resources in the community to assist individuals, and it, and, I, and I and I tell my class this, I teach at the transition center, but you know, probably any situation in which you find yourself, there's a community resource that that, that can that can that can help you to get through whatever you're having. And the other thing that the reason this is important is because I had no idea, brother Hines, you know, as it relates to the the wonderful things that. Lowe's and Fishers uh, 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 is on, and we're going to talk about some of those other things when we come back. This is a call to action. A call, call to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. I'm interviewing, you know, the executive director of Lowe's and Fishers, Mr. Charles Hine III. We'll be right back. Call to Action, interviewing Mr. Charles Hines III, who is the executive director of a great organization in our community called Lowe's and Fishes, that really serve a lot of purposes. They have a lot of programs, and we just finished discussing the program for the homeless, and you know, there are resources available through Lowe's and Fishes for individuals who are homeless, and we also discussed momentarily uh, a program for people who are having some kind of drug problem. So this is another resource in our community that's designed and positioned to assist individuals and families in some instances with whatever problems that they may be having. The one thing that I wanted to, to say, and, and you can talk about this in a minute, you know, I've heard that one of the necessary components of being able to get help is to, to want help, you know, and, 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 and I guess a lot of people find it strange 
and you can address it, that people are in situations, but it seems that they don't want him. But, you know, a lot of people with agencies such as yours, they said, you got a woman. You got a woman. You got to have a made up mind. True. I, I, uh, we believe that also. Um, you know, just by indication that, you know, people come to our, our day services facility. I mean, they're there because they want help. Um, you know, uh, during the holidays, you'll see people that don't ordinarily come uh, to a facility where they can get free things or free help. Uh, now, what you mean by day services? What what they do? Day services. We have a day services facility um, at 651 Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and um, we do a number of things out of that facility. Um, a person can come, uh, pick up food, and we have three aspects of, of how we deliver food. Um, People can come and get a snack daily. They can just walk through the door and pick, go to the counter and pick up a snack. On Tuesdays, we do we make a concerted effort to do uh, sack lunches. We don't have a kitchen, so all of the sack lunches, the beauty of that is all of the sack lunches are donated by uh, sponsoring churches, affiliated churches, uh, individual uh, groups uh, that have come together. As long as they have a certified kitchen, uh, they can bring us uh, sack lunches, and we'll do about 100 to 125 sack lunches every Tuesday. Uh, and then once a month, uh, once every 30 days, um, a person can make a grocery appointment. Um, so uh, they call in on a Friday at 1 o'clock, um, and then they're given a time to pick up their groceries that following Wednesday. And we do about anywhere from 65 to 75 appointments per week on groceries. And a person will walk out with at least uh, uh, two, sometimes three, bags of groceries, depending upon the composition of the family. Uh, if it's a larger family, quite naturally, they get a larger, more provisions. Um, uh, if it's an elderly person, quite naturally, we make on a fixed income, we, we try to make a concerted effort to give them more. If it's a disabled person, we try to make it an effort to give them more. But uh, So a person can come in and, uh, you know, uh, as far as what we do as far as food is concerned, and uh, snacks, lunches, and then groceries. And we're always busy. Uh, when, it, when it comes to that. Um, also, a person can come into our facility and uh, we have a, a two showers. So if they're living out under a bridge, living in an wow. abandoned building, uh, living in a junkyard, you know, uh, we've seen it all. You know, we've seen people living behind dumpsters. Whatever the case may be, um, uh, they can come to us and take a shower. Quite naturally, we provide all of the toiletries that they would need. Um, uh, if they also uh, need help with uh, uh, prescription assistance, uh, two of the things I, I, I kind of couch them as progressive programs, but two, two things that they can come to us for that I, I deem to be progressive, um, a person can come to us and get help with a prescription, and a person can come to us and get help with uh, obtaining uh, their uh, birth certificate, or, and then subsequently their state-issued ID. Um, so uh, those are programs that we administer as long as, as it relates to the prescription assistance. We try to concentrate on, on uh, medications that uh, you typically see in, in uh, low income and in homeless populations. So heart, kidney, diabetes, cholesterol, um, pneumonia, bronchitis, uh, antibiotics. Uh, we quite naturally, we try to leverage the money that we get with uh, some of the prescription discount programs in town, some of the institutions like Kroger and Walmart that will, you know, uh, help you out with uh, generic drugs and in some cases free medications. Um, and then we have community partners uh, that we, you know, we encourage people to, if, if they qualify, to register with uh, the W.T. Anderson Clinic and, and we can write a check to them for a person to go get their medications also. So um, that's a program uh, that we're, we're extremely proud of. Um, and it, it all comes under the category of health maintenance. You know? um, and then we have a uh, uh, birth certificate and, and, and Georgia State issue uh, ID program. So it, they're, they're tied together. If you want to get a, a, uh, a uh, ID uh, nowadays, you have to have a certified copy or the original of your birth certificate. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, as long as a person was born in the United States, then, uh, you know, uh, we will send off for it. We, we incur that cost. Once it comes to us, if this is in pursuit of an ID, we then in turn make a check out to the uh, Department of Driver Services and uh, we can help them get their ID, which is huge because an ID will hopefully allow you to 
become employed, you know, get a job, get a, get a, get a job uh, get your benefits started, get into school, uh, housing, um, you know, if you're going to enter into housing, you'll need some sort of, uh, you know, legitimate ID. So um, that's a huge aspect of what we do. Um, so in terms of what we do at the day service facility, quite naturally, the three aspects, the sack, uh, snacks, sack lunches, and then the grocery box program, and then the free shower and laundry. I forgot to mention the laundry. A person can bring a, a load of laundry to us. We provide all of the, uh, we have two washers, two dryers. Uh, they can do one load, <laughs> uh, and that's because we just have a you know, steady stream of people coming. Um, but they can come in, we provide all of the detergent that they would need to do that. Um, so um, those are pretty much all of the programs, in addition to some smaller things that we do. Other things we do out of our day services facility would be, um, we have a relationship with Consumer Credit Council. Right. So we are able to provide uh, financial literacy for, uh, courses to people. Um, we're partnered with um, Making Bib ELC in administering that program, um, and primarily the people that we send to that class are people that live in our, our 11 transitional housing programs. Right. It's part of their individual service plan, right. Right. Uh, so it helps them understand the finances and how to become uh, financially uh, right. literate. Right. Um, and then we have a, another relationship with the University of Georgia Bibb County Extension Center um, where um, uh, our lady comes in and she sets up a hot plate and she teaches people how to fix uh, healthy, cost affordable meals. Uh, try to get people out of from going to a convenience store. And, 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 <laughs> you, 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 you and I both, if I'm, but I'll speak for myself. I definitely need, could use that. But uh, she teaches them how to fix uh, low cost affordable meals. Now you said meals. with a hot plate. She does it with a hot plate because she's coming to our facility. We don't we don't have. I a understand kitchen. that, but I mean, it just goes to show that if a person is in a situation, I don't want to cause any fires, but you know that 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 you know you can cook with a hot plate. You know, <laughs> right. All kind of ways right. to get creative and, it is. It and is. try to do whatever is necessary. Well, let me say this quickly, sure, because I don't want the show to end without my making this comment. Yes, sir. That is nothing short of phenomenal. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, I had no idea. And I've been, I, well, thank you. I started to say how many years, but let me just promise you, <laughs> I've been around a minute, okay? <laughs> and I just want to congratulate you and, and your support system, your employees, you know, your staff and whatever. Now, the thing that I want to know, how about support? You know, I know you have to have some support. Does it just come from this coalition of churches or are there any other mechanisms you know, uh, do you have any events, yes, you know, to help try to, to garner support? How do you manage yes, sir. to continue to do all of these things? Well, uh, the, the challenge of, of uh, doing all of these things, of, of those things, is, is ever increasing. Uh, um, but we do have a, a core group of uh, sponsoring churches, and then we apply for uh, grant money and money from foundations. Uh, and then we have um, special events, and then we do two appeals a year, meaning we'll just send out a letter asking people for their support and their help. Um, as it relates to special events, we do have um, two events coming up. Uh, we have one on October 26th at the Fish and Pig on Mosley Dixon Road. Uh, that will be a party and auction. Um, we have a a performer uh, that will be performing live music at that particular point in time. Um, so we want people to, to come out and join us on that. You can buy purchase tickets via PayPal. Um, you can go to our website at uh, lobesandfishesministry.org and, and uh, you'll see all of that where you can buy event tickets or just make a general donation through PayPal. Um, we also have a, a, a crowdfunding uh, portal on our website by the name of GoFundMe. Um, if a person doesn't have a PayPal account uh, and they just want to make a donation, they could go to GoFundMe and uh, kind of read a little bit more about our story and uh, make a donation if they so choose that way. And then there's quite naturally the old fashioned way. If you want to send a donation to PO Box 825, uh, Macon, Georgia 31202, uh, we, would, we would greatly appreciate it. We are a 5013C, um, so we, we do send out uh, receipts uh, to that effect, and uh, we would appreciate any support we can get. Currently, we're down about 25% in funding, and it's just because it's tough. I mean, uh, the, 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 
institutions that are doing the funding have less money in their coffers to give, and then you've got more institutions asking for support. Well, we're running out of time, but what I want to do is to encourage, you know, those of us in the community who can help to give help. You know, these services are documentable. I'm sure that Mr. Hines will invite you to come by to examine the books, the sack lunches, you know, the showers, and anything else to just uh, assure that it's authentic. I want to congratulate you again. You know, uh, it's www.loves, L-O-A-V-E-S-A-N-D-F-I-S-H-E-S, ministry.org. Okay, www.loves and fishes ministry.org. And what's that phone number? The number is 478 741 1007. This is a call to action. A call to action. I'm your host, Alex Abisham. I have an interview, uh, Mr. Charles Hind III, with all kind of meaningful and useful and educational information about loaves and fishes ministry. Help them make a donation. Have a great day. www.makingblackpages.com